I want to take a few moments to talk to you about a few things, the things that are going on here in Ecuador. I know a lot of people are concerned about all the talk about the, all the crime, the assassinations, the political upheaval, all this stuff that's going on. Uh, I'm certainly no expert on political, all, anything political. I, I don't know the left from the right. You know, I, I, I can't speak really professionally about any of these candidates other than I can repeat what I hear on the street. You know, and I, as many of you know, Stella is a very close personal friend of mine. And I, uh, being that she's Ecuadorian, she knows all of these candidates. I get a lot of information from her, and it's 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 really sad in her case because the candidate that was assassinated in Quito was uh, her candidate. So, you know, we you can. If you could see the impact that it had on her, like I've seen the impact, then you can see the way the whole country is affected because she really represented the way the whole country feels. Every candidate that's running for president right now, I would think, is just scared to death, man. I mean, you know, we've heard lots of people say things like Ecuador is turning into another Colombia from the 80s and 90s. You know, I'm not going to argue with that. I can't say yes or no. There's the talk that I hear is that whoever gets elected uh, this next weekend will be the president for, I think, 18 months to fill in the space for Lasso being gone. And the talk on the street is that more than likely, it's going to be a Cordiesa. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but it's what I mean is that it will be somebody that's supported by Correa, Rafael Correa, the former president that is in Belgium right now, avoiding prison in Ecuador. The theory is that whoever gets elected will essentially pardon Correa and then Correa will slide in here and run for president in the next election. So what does that mean to me? You know, I seriously, as far as living here, my real, real only concern is this my, is the question is, is my money safe here? The money that I have invested in CDs here, uh, that I bought with me when I came here. I've been here two years and four months now, and my money has been, some of my money has been invested in CDs at Jet Cooperative, and I've made good money on it. And I was even told by my Banker, he's already promising me a better rate if I roll it for another year. My CDs expire on December 1st, and at that time, I had to make a decision on whether I'm going to stick it out and stick it out with Ecuador and Monta and live here and continue doing what I'm doing, which is nothing more than just sharing my experiences with you. On the topic of crime, folks, there's crime in every country in the world. Crime is crime is crime. The crime here is a lot unique. It's unique compared to what we have in the United States. Crime here, the biggest form of crime is petty crime. And it's sad to say, I think I'm sad to say that it's not, they're, they're, they don't want to rob you for the sport of it, like some of the low-life asshole pieces of garbage in the United States who are just out committing crimes for the hell of it. These people here are doing it because they're trying to get money to raise their family. 
feed our kids and our babies and mom and daddy and everybody. It's it's a shame. It's it really kind of pisses me off that this country has to be of the type of country where people have to commit a crime to be able to feed their family. But that's another issue, a political issue, that I can't get involved in because I'm not an Ecuadorian. I can make suggestions, but you know, I've already been told that I can't fix this culture. And so there's not much I can do about it. I try to do as much as I can to help expats and Ecuadorians alike. To tell you the truth, I don't know what I'm going to do after this election. I, my girlfriend is here and I love her and I don't want to lose her and I don't want to leave her. See, if it wasn't for her, I probably would have already been gone. A lot of the problems that I've had with being here, I've managed to deal with and I've managed to kind of live with, particularly the noise. I, to tell you the truth, I don't really hardly hear it anymore. It's still there, but you know. But anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about that. The other thing I wanna talk about is the fundraiser that I did for Mark Bradbury was a raging success. You people are the most amazing people on this planet. We have raised over $8,000 for Mark's family. And it's all because of you. Not me, but all because of you people. And Mark is doing really good. And this picture that I'm posting right here, I took just this morning, just a few minutes ago, when I had a video conference with him. He's actually, he's still in ICU, still has the trach, but he's sitting up and he's smiling. And he tried to talk to me, but I, you know, I can't read lips, so I don't know what he's saying. I just told him, he said, just take it easy, you know, and I'm taking somebody up there tomorrow to see him, and maybe I'll get lucky to get to go in and see him too, I hope. But it looks like Mark is well on his way to recovery. He still has to have bypass surgery done, but they're going to wait until he's essentially out of the hospital and letting him get home and get rehabilitated from the surgery he had, get him past his pneumonia that he had, get him to where he's breathing on his own, and then they're going to do the bypass surgery. He has a stent right now in his heart, and he's minus one kidney. And on top of all that, they shaved him. He looks like a new man. So, I'm sure we will do a video, a tribute video, uh, thanking all of you people, those of you that donated to Mark Bradbury, I tell you folks, you can't imagine how much I'm overwhelmed with pride and just so proud of you people and just, you see, and I, I'm not one for charging for anything. I don't want money out of this channel and I was kind of reluctant about doing this fundraiser, but I saw a good cause for it and so did you. And you guys showed it in the bank account. Every, every, every single bit of that money is going to go to Mark's family and to help them when he's in recovery. And we thank you so much. We thank you so much. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted, you know, I'm kind of running out of content because I've been busy with Mark and and Irina and trying to help them and maybe now we can start slowing down a little bit and take a break and get him home and then I can start focusing on some better content for you. I've got a lot of stuff down the pipe so I will, I will, I'll be doing it soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks so much for subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you every, every one of you. And I'm not going to say if you don't like this video bite me. Feeling kind of humble today. <laughs> Thanks for watching.